Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jason Burns and I'm giving a public lecture on the German Spurgeon, the life of Johann Gerard Onken, a famous uh, Baptist preacher in Germany. The source for this uh, material is from an article that I wrote for the Baptist Times on November the 10th, 1994. The Baptist Times uh, a ceased publication but the source material for this lecture is from an article that was published by It took me a number of months to research uh, this paper and I hope that you get the benefit and blessing uh, from this research. Let us come before the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and your grace and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And Father we thank you for all your goodness and we pray that you would be with us today, that you would be pleased to bless, that we would know your love and we would know your grace. Bless this lecture Lord and may it be a blessing to your people in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The taking of that step led to the establishment of the first Baptist Church in Germany and was a significant factor in the spread of the Baptist denomination. Onken was born on the January 26, 1800. He had a start, sad start in his life. His father died two years after Onken's birth as a German refugee in England. Johann was brought up by his grandmother in a small principality in Germany called Vale. As it was occupied by the French army, the young boy witnessed many atrocities. It seemed he gained little in the way of education and had no vital knowledge of true Christianity, being baptized into a nominal Lutheran background as a child. His life took a dramatic turn when at the age of 14 he left home for Scotland to work for a merchant there. He became most impressed by the Scots religious zeal and admired their strict adherence to the Sabbath. While in Scotland he came under the watchful eye of the merchant's mother who made sure the Presbyterian Church. It was here that for the first time in his life he heard the gospel message. It made a powerful impression on him and when he left Scotland for England he took with him an enormous sense of guilt. God was convicting him of sin. In 1819 he came into contact with Christian friends in London and it was here that in, an incident occurred which brought home to him God's providence and dealings in his life. The coach on which he was traveling was involved in an accident and Onken was on the roof and was thrown to the ground leaving him with a bloody nose and badly shaken. He felt that God had saved him from more substantial injuries and from this time on he began to take life very seriously. Shortly after this he went to live with a Christian family in Blackheath. The head of the house was a deacon of an independent evangelical church who attended the worship meetings, once again heard the gospel message. However, not all influences were good and while in London he mixed with less desirable elements in the capital. But he soon saw that the seedy life of the city was vain and left him empty. He contrasted this with the family who met daily for family worship and prayer. He noticed too the love that the deacon and his wife showed him and their earnest prayers that he might be saved. Their prayer were answered, he heard Romans 8.1 preached at Great Queen's Street Methodist Chapel. At last he put his faith in Christ and found peace for his soul. This was no superficial conversion. Immediately he witnessed to his faith even buying tracts to distribute and writing to tell his friends and family God blessed his witness and gave him his first convert. His local church soon recognized his evangelist to missionary society who sent him to the Rhineland in 1823. Alone and without support, Onken arrived in Hamburg, the city which was to come, become his base for the rest of his life. Immediately he began to preach the gospel, but he had no idea what he was up against. Germany at this time was simply a nominal religious country. 
the age of Goth before Onkin's birth had spelt the death knell of true spiritual religion. Rationalism reigned supreme. The church was simply a state civil service. Onkin wrote that the chief need of the hour was to emphasize the biblical doctrine of regeneration. A man became a Christian by being born again, not by baptism or Christian family heritage. Soon a group of believers gathered together in Hamburg where they met an all Jewish warehouse. Where they met in an all Jewish warehouse. One of Onkin's first friends was a court artist, the Grand Duke of Melkenburg. He became inspired by Onkin's missionary favour. By the time Onkin had reached middle age, he had much forward he had much for which to be thankful. He was the first he was the first to establish Sunday schools in Germany. A bookshop which opened in Hamburg was well used and helped to finance his Christian activities. He started a tract distribution society, which became a European institution. He was also instrumental in establishing many missionary societies in Germany. He preached the length and breadth, the length and breadth of the land, and God blessed his ministry. However, he had detractors and enemies. The apathetic Lutheran Church, the state, and many of the German people hated him and his movement. Like Paul, he was flogged and imprisoned, but never faltered. Like Jews fleeing from the Gestapo, he and his followers were hunted down, beaten, and their goods confiscated. He visited Russia, Poland, and Denmark, but the and on returning to Hamburg he was sent to prison where he witnessed to his jailers whenever the opportunity presented itself. Opposition to his ministry intensified following his baptism in 1834. This came about only after much prayer and consultation with godly men like Robert Haldane and close reference to the Bible as a result of which Onkin was convinced that baptism by immersion was the proper course of action. It is difficult to estimate today what the conclusion was to mean to the German church. The Lutheran church had always taught infant baptism. The state viewed infant baptism as a part of German national life. It was a national institution even to those who were atheistic. So when Onken, Onken began preaching that it was wrong, he was putting the axe to the tree, shaking one of the foundations of German life, almost declaring a revolution. As a consequence, there was a great uproar to suppress this anti Onkin's own followers were split on the issue. Nevertheless, the first Baptist church in Germany was established, which was to be influential in the development of the Baptist denomination elsewhere on the continent. His life was not without personal tragedy. His greatly loved youngest son died in the most tragic circumstances in 1850. At the age of only eight, he was burnt to death, and his father preached his son's funeral sermon on the text, Boast not thyself tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Scarcely had he started speaking when he was overwhelmed with emotion. Breaking down, he cried, My dear Philip, my dear Philip. The congregation were all touched and wept with their beloved pastor. Eight years earlier in Hamburg, the persecution died down. A new church was built in the city and also a college for preachers. Hearing of this initiative in London, Charles Spurgeon raised money for this enterprise, indeed even given the opening address. The two by 1866, when the Austrian-Prussian War began, persecution had ceased in the whole of Germany. The German Baptists were conscripted, but the church was far from inactive. More than 1.35 million tracts were distributed, along with other Christian literature, and much hard work was put into relief the sufferings of the poor. After the war, Onkin spent some time traveling, and on a trip to Russia was able to exert some influence upon the Tsar to adopt a more tolerant policy with regard to religion. At the age of 70, he suffered a stroke, after which his time was spent in devotional prayer. As they prepared himself for his death, his friends and over 100,000 Baptist communicants throughout Europe were saddened. They regarded him as their spiritual father, but in fact it was another 14 years in 1884 he died in Christ. Onken, wrote Charles Spurgeon, was an apostle Paul. I would remember him as being a pastor to Christ's flock in a time of intense persecution, powerful spirit-filled preacher, affectionately regarded as the German Spurgeon. This is the end of the lecture from my article which was in the Baptist Times and uh, in this short lecture 
a phenomenal amount of research went into that. So feel free to use uh, the video if you want to download it and copy it and hand it out to your um, congregation. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, it would be a blessing for people to be inspired and encouraged uh, by this video. So feel feel free to uh, make copies of it and distribute it in your churches and amongst fellow Christians. So thank you for listening and God bless you. I'll be doing some more lectures uh, today, hopefully.